When I was talking to Franz de Waal, I read part of his book on difference, and there was this section that he cited from a female author who, uh, she said she threw up her hands in dismay because she couldn't stop her young boy from playing with guns. She took everything that was even remotely resembling a gun out of the house, and then she caught him one day shooting the toothbrush at the cat. Bang, bang, bang. Instead of noticing that he had this male propensity to aim and shoot that was deeply rooted in her son, she was appalled to the core by his intractable masculinity and believed that her, what would you say, ideologically addled sense of what constituted masculine behavior was so morally admirable that it was perfectly fine to her to be disgusted by the fact that no matter how hard she oppressed her son, he was still a boy. And all of that was couched in this moral terms. And I thought, you witch, that's, that's absolutely unforgivable. Yeah. To see that as, as such an intrinsic part of your boy's character and then to throw your hands up in moral dismay about exactly this, patriarchal oppression and toxic masculinity and all of that. I don't know what you make of this, but let's imagine that you have a woman who's never had a good relationship with a man in her life. And maybe this is a consequence of disrupted familial structure too, right? So multi-generational consequence of disrupted familial structure. And maybe the relationships she's had have not only been absent, but bad. That woman has a very difficult time discriminating between male competence and male power compulsion, right? Because it's not easy to distinguish in authority, power and competence from compulsion. Mm -hmm. And so imagine you don't have much experience with that. And so you're so terrified of anything that's male because you've had a pathological history with males. Not that I'm attributing that to the women. I'm saying this is part of this pattern of disruption is that you're primed to regard any display of masculine will as indistinguishable from oppression and compulsion. Mm -hmm. And so then, well, what are you going to do? Well, when your son manifests that, you're going to crush it because you mm -hmm. think it's bad because you can't discriminate. I studied female and male antisocial behavior, and mm -hmm. male <laughs> antisocial behavior tends to be much more physically violent. Mm -hmm. And so most of the people who are imprisoned are male, mostly because we imprison violent offenders, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. We don't necessarily imprison white collar criminals, even if they defraud like 60,000 people, but you know, a mugger, well, we're gonna lock him up. And it, yeah, mm -hmm. I can understand that, although you know, not entirely because mm -hmm defrauding 60,000 people out of their pension isn't exactly nothing either. But in any case, it's almost all men in prison and it's almost all violent offenders. And so then you say, well, what's the female equivalent of antisocial personality? And that's a tough question because it's much more subtle. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is reputation destruction and exclusion, mean girl syndrome, and everyone understands that. You can't play with us, for example. That's a nice expression of female antisocial behavior. And that reputation destruction also scales really nicely on social media. And mm -hmm. so one of the things I think is happening to our whole culture is that we're suffering from a radical influx of female type antisocial behavior. That's mm -hmm. cancel culture, that's reputation destruction and savaging. But we can't have a conversation about that because all the pathology is on the male side. It's like, no, all the pathology isn't on the male side. Plain and simple. There's social pathologies that have a feminine orientation, that would be the infantilization of everything. And then there's toxic femininity, which is this tendency to derogate and to savage reputations and to escape scot-free in the aftermath of that. And the use of manipulation and innuendo and all of that. Very, very difficult to cope with. Uh, very difficult to put boundaries around too, especially on social media.